Hello, everybody. That's a hot mic. Um, if you guys have any questions or if I'm saying something that you want to know more about, please raise hands or just shout a question at me. Um, super appreciate that. Any sort of questions if you're interested and, or talk to me afterwards. We'll do question and answers at, like, you know, just throughout. So um, if you have any questions, raise a hand and I will do my best to answer those. Um, like Lori said, my name is Joe. I, I operate under the moniker Moonlight Speed. Follow me on Instagram. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, and I basically run my shop out of my garage. Um, I started doing that, um, I don't know, all the way back to when I was in high school. Um, we were, um, actually, you know, let me start where, where it kind of all began. I was, uh, the first art that really struck me as a young person, I was probably about eight, nine years old, I was really excited about skateboard art. Uh, artists like VCJ doing graphics for Powell Peralta skateboards, Jim Phillips, um, who worked for Santa Cruz for still, uh, now his son does the, a lot of graphics for Santa Cruz. Um, those graphics, like the immediacy and the intensity of them were something that I was really, really attracted to and kind of really like it was a, an explosive thing and I connected with it really, um, really dearly. So I would sketch all the time as a kid um, in sketchbooks. My parents really encouraged that, just always had art supplies for me to mess with. So I was drawing, just recreating, just the Santa Cruz slasher, this image here, I probably drew a hundred times in, you know, various forms of quality. Um, all the way through my adolescence. Um, and then that kind of moved farther, in, like as I, you know, I, I like get, I got older, I, oh, this image is obvious, this is a more recent image, but obviously, you know, uh, inspired by Jim Phillips, something like that, it could easily go on a skateboard graphic as well as a poster. Um, as I got older, I started really, being uh, attracted to the lines of like Art Nouveau and this style is more Dark Nouveau. Uh, artists like Aubrey Beardsley and Harry Clark who did this image. Um, a lot of patterning and really stark like black and white imagery. Um, and Alphonse Mucha, that Art Nouveau, if uh, you know any of you or look that stuff up, you'll recognize it. It's something that is kind of in, uh, throughout all design nowadays. You see it here and there. Um, and yeah, that's, those, the, that was kind of where I, start, I started drifting farther into Art Nouveau and seeing poster art um, as a young person um, and picking that kind of stuff up, like picking up concert posters and whatnot, which I'll get back to in a moment here. Um, my introduction to screen printing, um, I, was at a local record store. We have Wax Tracks. It's, I believe it's the oldest independent record store in the US. Um, this was my, I grew up in the mountains of Colorado, but I would make a 45 minute drive with my older sister when I was a kid down to the record store. And there were always silkscreen posters in the window. And I was lucky enough that I was growing up in a period where I could go up put my name and my phone number on the back of one of those posters and they would call me when the show was over and I could come pick it up for free. Um, and that's what those post the, the posters that I make are for. They initially were just promotions. Um, now people can print them digitally and as the digital age, has, we've moved into a digital age, people still want this tactful, uh, this tactile piece of paper that people have had their hands on and they've it's become a doc, a, an art piece that commemorates a concert poster. So I, this, that, that's where all like my, me coming into screen printing and understanding what it was really all about, um, that it kind of all took shape here, buying music and getting concert posters. Um, 
And as I got older, I was playing in bands in Denver, um, really cruddy bands. Um, but we were poor. We were kids. We didn't have money to pay somebody to mass produce record covers or anything like that. The records basically bankrupted us, period. So we would get nice paper from the craft store, take it home, screen print it, and then we could go dr get in a van, drive on tour, and sell these beautiful things. These, you know, um, it was a lot of fun, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And it also was an easy way for to cut my teeth um, by just honing this craft of doing it ourselves, because we couldn't afford to do it any other way, making t-shirts, making screen printing on physical CDs, making record covers, um, and it was all real fun doing it with like, you know, four of my best friends. Um, yeah, and this is a really bad photo of a terrifying basement <laughs> the, of me. The, this is one of our, our first setups, which was basically just a table in a basement screen printing. Uh, it was cold. I live in Colorado. You guys get cold here too. Um, and having to endure that was, it was something. I don't know. It wasn't the greatest of times. But anyways, you can do it. You don't need, an, a, like, to be able to print and create art. Um, you can do it. Oh, yes, go ahead. That's actually a fan, and that fan is pulling air away from, from the screen. <laughs> I think at this point in time, I was printing with uh, lead-based inks, old NASDAR ink that uh, I was getting for super cheap because it's really bad for you to be around. Um, so I was partially poisoning myself uh, while, while printing whatever poster this was at the time. Um, yeah, so, I mean, but you don't need an elaborate setup. I mean, that's literally just a house fan that I had set up just to circulate air. Um, and you can do it for under $100. You can get a setup going and uh, you can create, we were doing t-shirts, we were, you know, we were being, we were just making merchandise to sell while we were going on tour as, as a band. Um, this is flash forward to about 10 years ago, um, you know, like, or from that, from that first, from this photo to this photo is about probably a span of 10 years. And then, this is a warehouse space in Denver that me and three other people had started a co-op in. This is what we started out with. And then um, we kind of lined everything out, kind of got, got a feel for the space and how we were going to operate. Um, and then this is what it turned into. We basically were, had a merchandise store, like a store, uh, crap, like a art supply store in the front of it where we were selling inks, we were selling screens, um, basically anything that pe people needed to do to get started in screen printing. And then also in, in this back room here, I'm just gonna take this with me. In this back room here that you can kind of see into, we were, we were able to have six people printing at once, so we were running classes out of it and teaching people uh, basically just the ins and outs of screen printing. Um, and then they could also rent, eventually rent space out once we knew that they were capable of doing it on their own at an hourly rate. And then on that doorway that you can't really see into was our commercial print, printing space. That was basically where I was printing and those other or artists were doing. We, you know, cause you kind of need to, I don't know, where you have people uh, going in and out of and and printing their own stuff when they're renting space, it kind of gets destroyed pretty quickly. Um, so we always, you know, when you're printing for other people, you gotta, uh, when you're doing commercial work, you kind of have to be perfect when you're doing it for someone else. For myself, I know the ins and outs of my artwork and I can kind of judge uh, what can pass or not. But when you're doing it for other people, you want it to be perfect. Um, yeah, this was our opening night. Um, and so, you know, we had a big, a big gallery show there. There was a bunch of art, uh, a bun we had a bunch of artists that we printed their work and, and sold it. It was a lot of fun. So it's kind of uh, just a nice way to see that, that space activated. It was, it was maybe, uh, I, 
we ran this space together for about three years and then I ducked out. Oh, this is our commercial space. That's basically what we were printing on. That was a, we also had a manual, but we had an automatic, that's called an autom automatic press, which is basically for when you don't wanna hurt your arms and get really buff anymore and you just let the machine do the work for you, which is nice. Um, and this is my space now, which is I move, I've moved back into my garage. Um, me and my wife were, bought a house uh, together and now we, which we still live in and we've lived there for the past five or six years now. And um, I'm, this machine here is called a Cincinnati One Arm and it's basically like a rowboat. You just hold on to this uh, big arm here and row it like a boat and you can screen, you can screen print that way. And you know, so I'm getting, I'm getting a workout in still, but it's a lot easier than just hand pulling. But you guys are really young, so you got about 20 years of, 25 years of being able to manually pull until you get tired. Um, yeah, and then you know, as you can see, I also print T-shirts out of it. I don't do it very often. It's mainly I just print T-shirts for my own, my own. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'll finish this. You can come back around to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I still can do t-shirts. It really, 2020 was a really incredible year for all of us. <laughs> a pretty unprecedented year. I had all of my work basically go up in flames. Mad, I was able to be really versatile. One, not having overhead rent. I was running out of my garage, you know? So I... I think being liquid in this day and age, or to be able to go with the flow of things, of whatever life is throwing at us, is really, really important, especially when you're a freelancer. Um, and so I was really luck lucky to be able to, uh, I could print shirts if people needed it. I, I was doing a bunch of illustration work uh, for people. I wasn't necessarily printing any posters. I printed some posters for online live shows that were happening, but um, I was kind of using every tool in my bag to continue making money. I was doing illustration, I was doing prototyping for companies, like weird prototyping, uh, which is printing on weird things for people. Um, so that's kind of how I've built my business, is to be really versatile, um, but you know, I'm mainly doing the illustration thing because that's what I love, you know. Um, but having that skill set of being able to be really versatile is paramount, I think, especially in this last year. Your question. How do you actually make money? So when I was first doing it, probably back in that really grainy, sketchy photo that looked like it was happening in the, one of the Saw movies, um, that was. Um, it was a mixture of sometimes I would burn in the sun, burn, use the sunlight, because you can step outside with a, so, I don't, how many people here have screen printed? Maybe we should do one of those. Okay, I'm gonna explain what screen printing is real quick. Imagine your screen door on the front of your house, but it's on a, on a uh, big metal frame that you can move around, it's like one of those, and you, pour Elmer's glue or you basically coat it with an Elmer's glue, a photosensitive Elmer's glue. And then you can create a stencil from that um, by using, I've used masking tape, I've drawn it, drawn it on with fluid, I've used a thing called rubilith where you can, you, it's like a film that you cut out. Um, there's a, a, a million ways to skin the cat of how to you get transfer your image onto that Elmer's glue and on that screen. Um, so, and then you expose, it's, it's UV sensitive, so you expose it to sunlight. You can expose it through a, a light bulb just in your house. It's gonna take a long time. Currently what I'm using is a a uh, LED single point black light that I had done some research on and um, 
that was outputting the exact wavelength of light that you want, and it will expose in one minute. Um, you can buy it off of Amazon for $40. Um, but yeah, that's how I'm exposing it. And then I wash it out, that stencil comes out, and then um, basically you let that dry and you're able to print. You're welcome. <laughs> These are some of my initial sketches. Um, that this is the, how I, usually how my process works. I'll start with a pencil sketch to something, um, and I'll pitch that to clients. This in this case it was the band Lucero. Um, it'll usually start out with a pencil sketch. These things are only about two inches by one inch, so they're real small. It's something you can do, not invest a lot of time in, and essentially be able to pro provide a client. It's usually about three options. Um, and they'll let me know if I select, they'll select one or if they can, they kind of have their, uh, their say if they want to tweak these a little bit and then we'll move forward. In, in this case, they selected uh, the first option and that turned into this print. Um, And then other, t you know, and sometimes, and this one was mo mostly done, uh, you saw that initial, that initial sketch that I provided them. Then sometimes I will ink it with pen or brush, and then I'll, uh, I think this one was completed digitally, um, which I just used like a Cintiq or, you know, an iPad or something like that. Um, and in other cases, this began as an art print that, um, that I had sketched. I, I then used ink on this, and then also I completed it by using painting uh, watercolor onto uh, separate sheets of paper on a light board, and then I just scanned them in and overlaid them. So you can get really, really different, different effects. There's so many different ways to approach it. You've got you can use three colors and go super minimal. Um, and I think sometimes my favorite work by people is really, really minimal art. Um, and then you can get really intense. This is a 144 color screen print. Um, that was, <laughs> took the, uh, the printer one year to complete. Um, but it also sold for $2,000. Um, a piece. So you can get really, uh, really intense about it or you can go really minimal and that's what I really love about the medium of screen printing. Um, it can be uh, something that you watch people from all over the world. I watch identify with my work, other people's work and you're just like, hmm. It really makes you wonder like what people see in, in different pieces of art. Um, and that's kind of like where, when I was put, beginning my work, uh, when I, before I started working with bands, I had, uh, like with other bands, I wanted to put together a pretty solid body of work um, that I could show and start approaching national, larger bands. Because I, was, I had already done stuff for friends bands and, um, so what I initially did was I started a online store, I started a Tumblr page, and I, I put together a small body of work for an art show. And had that art show, had the pieces up for sale on my online site, and then started emailing bands. Um, and just telling, saying, hey, I'm here, if you guys ever need anything, if you guys are in town, I would love to provide you with some work. Um, and then you kind of negotiate about how that business practice, uh, how they want to do business. I know the bands I started initially working with didn't have a lot of money. We would split profits from the sales of the shows that night. Um, and then it's kind of graduated from there. Um, and once you start learning how to design for print, you can start 
designing for just about anything, which is really awesome. Whenever some, a company or some, a client will approach you, you can provide for them. And that's something I've always prided myself on. I've never signed myself up to do something that I wasn't capable. I've never not come through on a project for a client. And I think that speaks a lot. Um, I've never had to advertise. And my, the success of my business has uh, blossomed because I have always followed through. And it's always been through word of mouth, which I am very thankful for. Um, these were some guitar pedals that I, uh, with a company that I currently work with, a client, um, and uh, it was actually, both of these pedals have been on the cover of Premier Magazine. Um, they were honored as some of the best graphics uh, for guitar pedals last year and this year. Yep. It was a it was a huge hurdle. Uh, I was really nervous, and luckily it was a, a show with uh, three other screen print artists. And I had a, a close friend, or he became a very close friend of me, of mine, and an actual business partner. He um, kind of held my hand through the process of showing me, like, oh yeah, we're going to frame all the art. You know, we're gonna we're uh, gonna present all of this like it's important <laughs> and it helped a lot because it does i mean it, it it looks art looks great when it's framed it looks great when it's not framed too but um it was it was definitely scary having that first art show but um luckily i had i had a friend that was guiding me through it a little bit um hanging hanging an art show that was a, a scary situation as well you know learning how to do that um in and of itself is a challenge and a hurdle um yeah so then um and moving further into design um you know and print this this was for a band who was having this a release this was their album design. It transferred over into the labels on the records, the t-shirts, um, a poster for it, and it was a really successful show. Unfortunately, this band just happened to break up immediately after the show, so uh, it's all for naught, I guess. But it was a, it's always a fun project doing that, kind of trying to cluster different uh, objects, merchandise objects together. and. And also painting uh, murals, that's also another outlet. I'm not a huge fan of that because I, uh, I stress out a lot. I don't like to be under the gun like a timeline and being in front of people painting. This was about, we, this whole structure wrapped around, the painting was all the way around it. I think it spanned about 55 feet. Um, and that was pretty intense of a job, especially standing on slanted snow while doing it. That was. Not, not the easiest project, but it was also super satisfying to see that, uh, you know, have that event go down the night afterwards and uh, all those eyes on that, on that, even though it was a temporary structure. And yeah, also moving farther into design, I've done a bunch of design work for snowboard companies and uh, the, I was lucky enough to have a company use me for essentially their entire run. The company is now uh, shut down, but that's because the owner didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> but it was, it, you know, it's always a, a blast designing for things that are functional, uh, such as toys, <laughs> like snowboards, um, which I love to do very much. Uh, designing for stuff like drum musicians, going back into music, Drum heads, screen printing drum heads has always been a really fun thing to do to design. This was a, uh, for a, a drummer who collected my work, had, has collected my work and uh, wanted a drum head designed for him and uh, screen printed, so. And then moving over to the American Poster Institute as I've moved farther into my career and started getting, uh, like kind of delving farther into um, 
the gig poster world, there is a guild called the American Poster uh, Institute. And I think they're going to change their name because it's now kind of like an na international poster institute. It's, there's poster artists all over the world. And uh, this guild is essentially all of us uh, coming together and making, uh, trying to make festivals happen uh, or uh, poster shows at festivals such as like South by Southwest. Um, this is a photograph of my first uh, flat stock. It's, that's what the event is called, flat stock at South by Southwest. And it's about 150 poster artists from all over the world coming together and basically showing off their work. Um, we're able to sell our like posters there. What we have left over from concert po like concerts that we've done work for, and we're able to sell sell our work at this. Also, networking big time, meeting bands because there's thousands of bands in in Austin at this point in time uh, during this whole week. So you have bands coming through. They like your work. You exchange some information and you get a conversation going and and. That's one of the beautiful things about the music industry is that it's really a lot of handshake deals. It is not like a bunch of business decisions. It's like people talking and coming, uh, coming together and, and, and chatting and you're trying, you, these people become your friends, which is awesome. Um, and I love that. So it's a pretty intense week. This is another flat stock that happens at, in Chicago. This is the, at, uh, Pitchfork Festival in Chicago. Um, this one happens outdoors and we basically do the same thing. We set up booths. Each art artist has like a 10 by 10 foot uh, booth and we do the same thing. There's a lot of bands playing that festival. They come through, you get to meet them, chat, and maybe you develop a relationship with a working relationship with them. Excuse me. And then these are a bunch of poster artists. And that's uh, basically, it, it's kind of, I'm, I've been lucky enough to have a, develop a family with all these people. Um, and uh, we all work together, we collaborate together, we pass clients off to one, of it, one another when we're too busy. Um, and I'm really appreciative of that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that the and the American Poster Institute is it's a it's a guild that definitely helps guide artists, especially when they're younger. If you're like a a burgeoning poster artist and you're trying to get deeper into it, you can reach out, and there are so many people that are ready and willing to help each other out. Me being one of them, um, I think just about every person in this photograph has helped another artist come up one way, you know, at least one artist. Um, so, you know, when you're building all these relationships with all these people, it does not seem like work. And uh, I think really the most important part about, the, uh, about getting into all of this is really just to do it, to get the supplies, to start doing it, trying to make the art be, use every bit of your uh, anything that inspires you. I've, I've created the artwork from shadows, <laughs> stains on sidewalks, stuff like that. You see a shape and you're like, oh, that kind of looks like something. You know what? I'm going to go home and draw it. My, my sketchbooks look terrible. They look like a, a psychopath made it, like drew these pictures. But it's all about just doodling and starting somewhere and then building off of it until you're like, okay, this is like a palatable image, <laughs> you know? So, um, so yeah, what I would, I would suggest is um, just doing it. And that's, uh, the DIY culture is kind of like what I came up doing, you know, hey, we're gonna be in a band, let's do it. Hey, we're gonna go on tour, let's do it. Let's use your mom's van, uh, let's, hey, we're, Let's start making our own merch. Okay, we'll go get some screens and start printing it. So, and that's pretty much it. That's I, I, basically all I had prepared. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
That's, that's a good question. Um, I love the margins of screen printing. If I, I have a hard time really painting something, you know, I can't do it. Also, another thing that I, uh, I, I, so to answer your question, it limits you for sure. But within those margins is where the beauty is of, uh, of that art, you know, making that because I know what this is capable of. I, I'm always experimenting every, even now after 25 years of screen printing, I still am experimenting and trying to push that medium and you have some flops and then you also have some miracles happen. So, um, and that's always a real treat, you know. Um, I love those margins of working in that medium. And also the, the other thing for a working artist, screen printing, you have, you have your addition, right? So I'm creating a hundred posters. With a painting, you have one that needs to sell. But with creating an addition of it, I'm able to keep a piece of, for myself, but I'm also able to sell these things affordably to other people. And that was one of the, when I was a young kid, um, when I was in high school, I, would, I could afford art, $20 poster, $25 poster, of course I can afford that, you know, I, and I loved it, and now I'm able to collect art, man, that makes me feel really cool, <laughs> you know, like, so, um, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, the margins are there, you got, you, you, you're kind of walled in by this medium, but also that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, so th that's also a very interesting arc that's been happening. Uh, what, somebody that I collaborate with also, also um, and he lives right by me, is Lindsey Kuhn. He's been a screen printer since 1980s. He's a good friend of mine, and you know, obviously we print together, we hang out together, drink beers together, skateboard together. He um, essentially, you know, you had the 70s where the concert posters were being made for like the family dog and all that, all those classic rock posters that were being made. Those, you know, there was that arc where there was, those were basically just being made as advertisement. Now those things sell for thousands of dollars, right? Um, collectors and whatnot selling them for that much. But then you had a dip in the 80s, but then it's that started to rise again with artists like Kozik, and Lindsey Kuhn, Steve Walters was cutting his teeth then. And then it started peaking in the 90s as alternative music started rising. And they were, and all these punk rock t people were making posters because this is how we can grab somebody's eyes off the street and get them to our crappy punk show. Um, and that, um, and that was a real heyday because there were maybe 10 dudes doing it across the country. Now it's much more saturated. However, with the rise of the internet, it's also very accessible. It's not just your city that you're advertising to. You are, I mean, I'm selling posters. I'm able to sell posters. I've sold posters in like Japan, Israel, uh, I've sent tons of stuff to like Australia, the UK. They have a huge poster scene in the UK. Um, in fact, a, a, like a big group of UK artists come here for South by Southwest. They all fly out and then we're, you know, and then you're able to meet with people from across the world that do what you do. Um, really awesome to connect with those people. <clears throat> and yeah, there's, there is a lot of saturation, saturation, but still when you're talking 150 people across the world that are doing what you do, I think there's plenty of room, you know. Um, what I would like to see is right now we're in a time of very corporate. The music industry is kind of grasping at everything, trying to like can trying to consolidate it. You have uh, um, man not management companies, but promotion companies, uh, just trying to get everything under their blanket. 
so you have to go through these promotion companies. It's not going to stay like that. It's going to change. And when it does, if you're doing concert posters or anything like that, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Right now, I have to do a bunch of emailing with promotional companies. I, I work mainly with bands directly, but those promotion companies also need to know that I am working with the band directly. So they don't need to hire somebody else. It, it's real muddy. It's a, my, and like I said, you have to be fluid with all of it. You kind of just have to go with the flow, accept what's happening, but also stand your ground as far as what you're doing. But you have to kind of be a presence um, in that professional realm because they're operating at a m much more professional level than what the bands are operating at. And, that, and I like to work with the bands because I'm not that professional, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, the, it's the, the saturation's there, um, but at the same time, there's plenty of work to go around for everybody. Um, I want to just keep working with bands I want uh, that I love and listen to. I had uh, I had a band. I got to do a poster for a band that I never thought that I would do any work for. Um, one of my favorite bands ever. I loved them. A, a band uh, called Jawbreaker, old punk band from like the '90s, and I had they magically started doing reunions right before COVID and they had connected with me to do their poster for Riot Fest, and I was like, I think I cried a little bit. Um, like, I actually did cry a little bit, um, and also they sent me a photograph of all of them signing a poster, which they then sent, sent me in the mail. So I got the poster that I made with, like, my heroes signing it, like, their signatures on it. it so that was, like, a huge feather in my cap, um, another bit, one of my favorite bands, a band called Tame Impala. I've been working with them since they were just an Australian band. Um, I had liked them and reached out to them and they were like, hey, we're doing our first US tour. Would you want to do a poster for us at the House of Blues? Thing is that it's in a week, you know? And so that was, but I wanted to work with them and I, you know, basically just put my head down and drew something up for them. And, I've been working with them ever, ever since, and they are now one of the world's biggest bands. So that is, that's a treat. So, I don't know, maybe like Bruce Springsteen. That would be pretty cool to do a poster for Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> um, I don't know who else I would want to do. Who should I do a poster for? I don't know, somebody that probably isn't even alive anymore, I'd like to do that. <laughs> resurrect them, once they learn how to resurrect people, they'll, uh, and they do their t first US tour in 30 years. Hendrix, that'd be major. Um, yeah, I'd like to do Hendrix, Thin Lizzy. If Phil and I could get, come back, I'd love to do a Thin Lizzy poster. Any more questions? Oh, uh, well, okay, so I kind of covered this a little bit um, earlier on in the talk, but um, with, during COVID, I watched about, well, I watched my, all of the, my work kind of go up in flames within a week. I was supposed to leave for South by Southwest, which uh, I had covered earlier. Um, this is essentially an event that happens and it's uh, about 150 silkscreen poster artists. Um, that got canceled. We were all planning on see, seeing each other. We were talking back and forth. All of us were like, oh, we're gonna be eating so much barbecue on Saturday. And then we realized how serious COVID was and everything shut down and we were not gonna see each other. And I, I watched a lot, like basically my whole life get upended. Um, I was very, very lucky um, to be really versatile in my work. I don't just do concert posters. 
I do a lot of illustration and design work, um, which I'll go through. This company, Dusky uh, Guitar Pedals, kind of saw that, uh, I, I work with them pretty often, and he was like, hey, I've got three guitar pedals coming out. Let's work on these throughout the year. That was some steady work. Uh, then I was having private commissions. People that collect from me, they were like, hey, would you mind doing a painting for me? Yes, of course, I'll do a painting for you. And um, I was also doing a lot of t-shirt design. Uh, a lot, there was some uh, there were some online live shows that bands were doing, you know, they'd be live streaming their concerts from somewhere and be selling packages, tickets for it, for people to watch, and they would get like a commemorative poster or something like that. So I was lucky that some of those bands that I work with often were doing that and hiring me to do that. Um, I was very thankful for that. What else did I do over COVID? I definitely slept a lot. Um, I have, I did not, I did not get COVID, but I do think that in late January, I may have gotten it. My whole, it ra raged through me and my wife and my daughter. Nothing too serious though. I mean, it was definitely like a sickness I had never gotten before, that's for sure. Um, but on that moot point, um, yeah, other than that, I, I think I, it was a lot of creating art. I used that free time. It was a real, usually my um, work schedule is pretty hectic. It's a lot of deadlines. Um, and as I kind of talked about this earlier as well. I, I pride myself on always hitting a deadline. Um, I think I can count on one hand over like 20 years or 15 years of uh, professionally screen printing, just always being good for your word. Um, that's something that has always, I've always prided myself on, and I think that has helped with the growth of my business, which has only been through word of mouth. Any other questions? All right, well. Thank you guys for having me very much. What are we looking at at a time here? All right. And I think we've got Ben coming up next. Yeah, thank you guys.